Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and PC gaming is becoming a huge business and we're seeing some very expensive gaming devices coming out on the market. This is one of them. Uh, this is the Logitech G900 Chaos Spectrum. It is a $150 gaming mouse that can be used both wirelessly as well as through a wired connection. So you have the best of both worlds, the wireless convenience along with a wire when you really can't uh, have any interference messing up your gameplay. Now I should mention in the interest of full disclosure that this mouse came in through the Amazon on Vine program free of charge. However, I had no direct communication with Logitech nor Amazon for that matter. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review to be made and no one is reviewing this video before it is posted. So let's get into the hardware here and see what we've got. Uh, this goes up to 12,000 DPI. You've got a, a DPI switch on here so you can adjust the sensitivity and I'll show you the software controls for setting up all this stuff in a second. Uh, we'll go through, I think there's 11 buttons on here that are uh, completely programmable. So every button on the mouse is programmable and can do different things uh, beyond the default. So what you got up here is your scroll wheel. Uh, what's cool is they've got a locking mechanism on here. So when you release that lock, the scroll wheel becomes kind of a free scrolling thing. Uh, when you put that lock back on, it will uh, get very rigid. So you have some degree of control over that. Uh, you can push the scroll wheel down, of course, as well as click it left and right. You have both left and right mouse buttons, which you'd expect to have on a mouse these days. On the side, you have some additional buttons here that can be programmed to do a whole bunch of different things. And we'll show you the software where you can do that in a minute. On the other side, you have a spacer here right now, but you can take the spacer out, and I'll do that right now, and what you can do is get out the little box of goodies that they include in the package here, and what you have in there are some additional buttons that you can put on, so I can uh, go ahead and just take these little buttons here and attach them. Uh, they snap in magnetically, so you don't really have to push it in at all. You just get it lined up the right way, and they uh, insert themselves, and now once that is in there, I now have two more buttons that I can configure on the software, and likewise, I can pull the buttons off of this side of the mouse and then put that spacer back on. So if I only want to have buttons on the right side of the mouse versus the left side, I could do that as well. So I can take out that spacer here, just to line that up, uh, get the magnet to catch on there, and those buttons now are disabled. So you can't get one big button. You can get two buttons or no button at all. But uh, what's nice is that if you do have a habit of accidentally hitting buttons on the side of your mouse, you can just take them out completely if it bothers you. So lots of uh, nice hardware configuration. And of course, you could have buttons, four buttons total, two on each side if you want to do something like that. Now right now, you'll notice I have a USB cable plugged into the mouse. But if I wanted to go wireless, uh, all I got to do is unplug it here and then uh, just connect up their wireless dongle that also comes in your little box of goodies here. And uh, this works like any other Logitech wireless mouse does. You just connect it to your USB port on your computer. In fact, you could use the same cable here as I'm doing uh, and go right into wireless mode. Uh, they do recommend that you use the dongle versus taking the wireless radio device out of the adapter here because they uh, want to caution you about interference. And if you are a serious gamer, you definitely don't want uh, to miss any mouse clicks when you push the button. So to get this thing as close to your mouse or in the vicinity of it as possible, uh, you definitely want to connect it up with the cable. Uh, but what's nice is that you do have that choice. And uh, if you want to be on a wired mouse, if you're in a big uh, gaming uh, competition or something with a lot of interference, you can have that, but uh, get the convenience when you're at home of having something wireless. The battery, they say, will last about 32 hours uh, if, though, you keep the LEDs here off. Now, the mouse configuration software only runs in Windows, but the mouse has onboard memory. So you can take settings that you can configure on Windows and then bring the mouse over to a Mac or a Linux PC and have those settings carry over with it. So I was able to uh, get the mouse to work on my Mac, but I couldn't configure it on my Mac. Uh, but once I did it on Windows, I could then have those settings carry over uh, to another platform or machine. Uh, if I go over to our buttons setup here, you can see we have five different profiles that the mouse can retain as well. So I can have different profiles based on uh, particular games that I'm playing or different use cases or whatever else might be going on. So you do have some uh, flexibility there. Uh, you can configure every one of the buttons, including even the scroll wheel and what it does. Uh, and you can really get pretty granular about it. What I'm going to do here, though, is configure that bottom right button that we attached earlier. And right now it's set to uh, just be a left click, but I can change that to do something else. So I'll go to assign new command. Uh, you've got some basic mouse functions that it can do. So I, again, I had it uh, being a left click. I can make it a right click or a middle click or something like that. Uh, you can have it do some keystroke combinations like close window or show desktop or something like that. Uh, but if I go over to multi key macro, I can just program in something of my own. So I can type in uh, testing, for example and I'll hit OK. And then what I'm going to do is uh, switch over to Notepad here. And if I uh, click on the uh, button here on the side, 
uh, you'll see now it puts testing on screen. So you're able to map uh, specific words, or perhaps, that you wish to uh, have outputted quickly into that uh, device there. The one thing that I don't like about Logitech software is that you can't mix and match things. So it'd be great to have a couple of keystrokes mixed with a click, but you can't do that. It's either a keystroke and that's it, or uh, a click or some kind of mouse function, but not a mix of the two. And that's the one thing when I was playing around with some of the Corsair stuff, uh, they allow you to mix and match different functions. So you can have that button issue, issue a click, but also uh, send keystrokes at the same time. So there are some limitations to what it can do. Now the DPI settings are right here. And uh, what I've got right now are four levels of DPI uh, settings on the mouse. And we'll switch back to my two up screen here. And you'll see uh, as I switch uh, through the settings here that uh, we get very uh, sensitive uh, down to very, uh, uh, very low sensitivity. So for example, right now you see I'm making very broad movements here and it's taking a long time to get that window uh, moved across. And if I go over to the end setting here, uh, you can see a very small movement moves that window very, very far. So that is what DPI settings are all about. And you can tweak all of that on this screen here to get exactly the uh, command that you want it to be. And I have it right now mapped to these two buttons, which makes the most sense. And uh, what'll happen here too is the mouse will tell me what mode I'm in. So I know uh, which of the uh, tick marks here I am looking at when I am uh, looking at the mouse and nothing else. Uh, down here are the LED controls. There isn't much to look at here because there really is only one, uh, one or two LEDs to look at, but you can change the behavior of uh, how that light works down there. Uh, this is kind of neat. This is a battery indicator, and it'll give you how much battery life you have on the mouse currently, uh, but it will also let you know uh, how much um, uh, impact uh, ba on battery life different settings will have. So right now, my settings are going to give me 25 hours. The lighting is taking 7 milliamp hours. If I turn off that lighting uh, option there, you can see it's going to go to a full 32 hours. And it's funny, I think there's certain things like cyan breathing gives you a little bit more battery life, so you can still get a light uh, just uh, with, with more battery life if you wanted to do something like that. So you have that ability there to look for those sorts of things. Uh, you can also uh, fine tune the surface that it's on. So if you have a special gaming pad, you can tell it you have that. And they also have a pretty cool feature here too, which is the input analysis. So you can uh, do a heat map here and see uh, which buttons you're pushing the most while you're playing a game. This is, uh, this is something they have on their keyboards also. It's a little bit more applicable to that, but I could uh, do a key press here and hit start. And as I'm clicking around with the mouse, it'll show me which percentage of buttons I'm pushing more. So if I'm doing one of those MOGA games where I'm clicking a lot of different buttons at the same time, uh, when I'm done with that activity, it shows me which buttons were uh, getting the most presses during a gameplay session. And there's some other settings here which aren't all that important to our discussion. But a really nice mouse though overall. I do wish there was a little bit more control over uh, some of the macros. I would, be, I would like to be able to mix and match uh, mouse clicks along with keystrokes, which I think would be very helpful in some games. But uh, beyond that, it's a pretty nice solid feeling mouse. Really nice and responsive. I really like like the uh, mechanical actuation of these switches here. It really feels very uh, responsive. I'm not feeling any latency. And what's interesting too is that when I'm on wireless, it feels as uh, responsive as it does when I am not on wireless. So I think they've uh, got a pretty good uh, mechanism worked out here for getting the best actuation uh, during gameplay. So pretty nice mouse overall. I think if you are in the market for something expensive, you're going to get what you're paying for here. Uh, but really, this is something you probably want to try in person first because uh, these kinds of things are very personal preferences and there's weighting issues and other things that come into play that people get comfortable with. And I think for uh, very serious gamers, you definitely want to try it in person first, but uh, I like it quite a bit. This is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Shabib. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.